historically, uh, you could uh, arbitrarily divide uh, this history into three groups. Uh, traditionally, or in, in ancient world, uh, melanoma presented as a locally advanced tumor and many patients had palpable regional lymph nodes. And because of that, the recommendations made around the turn of the century, which lasted well to the middle of the last century, were for patients to undergo a wide local excision and regional lymph node dissection because if they didn't have palpable nodes, there was a high probability that they would. And that way you could give the patient longer disease-free survival. Beginning around 1950 <clears throat> and uh, extending up to the early 1990s, the trend was to do elective lymph node dissection for patients who had uh, no palpable regional disease but had uh, a uh, primary tumor, which we began to understand more and more about as it was appreciated that the tumor thickness and presence of absence of ulceration were such important prognostic factors. And we don't have time to go back through all that, but it's, it, uh, it's a very predictable disease based upon uh, those findings. So then there was a period in which we tried to find out whether or not elective lymph node dissection, that is complete removal of a regional node bearing area, made any difference in outcome. And there are multiple international trials looking at this issue, and none of them showed a significant benefit in overall survival to elective lymph node dissection. So finally, the definitive international study was done, and it was published right around 1990. The, uh, the um, trial showed a very small difference, so that's an ideal result. If you're a pessimist, small difference is no difference. If you're an optimist, if you like that procedure, that's a significant difference to you, and you're going to help those two or three percent different patients in your practice, even though you might not see 100 a year, but you're going to help them anyway. So fortunately, in 1992, was published the procedure, uh, sentinel lymph node um, biopsy uh, for melanoma, which rapidly was shifted over to be applied to uh, breast disease, and now is, is used in a number of different primary tumors to, to uh, different extents. Um, and we've learned a good deal about sentinel lymph node biopsy. It's now 25 years since that was first um, described, and there have been professional reputations, all careers built on sentinel lymph node biopsy uh, publications alone. We can summarize those by making a few observations, though. First of all, that it's a multidisciplinary procedure. It requires cooperation of the surgeon the, the uh, um, nuclear medicine physician and the pathologist in order to get an accurate answer to the problem. So mapping is important. There's all kinds of controversies about um, uh, uh, different uh, types of isotope preparations to be used for mapping and whether one's better than another. There are also there are a number of anatomic areas in which it can uh, um, the uh, lymphatic drainage can move in different different directions. It can be bilateral if it's close to the midline. All sorts of things um, that we've discovered about lymphatic anatomy from it. Uh, but to get the 95-plus uh, positive identification rate, you need to uh, have the cooperation of all three um, entities. Um, the second is that the incidence of nodal metastasis, microscopic nodal metastasis, is very predictable, and that's based upon the same prognostic factors that we know predict overall survival. So we can begin to think about being selective. This isn't a procedure that everyone needs to, to undergo. We can say that patients who have a positive sentinel lymph node, that the prognosis for those patients who are, by definition, stage three patients, their prognosis is determined by the volume of tumor that's found in the lymph node. And that volume is, by consensus, the largest diameter of a uh, contiguous piece of tumor, so it's not the width of different nests of tumor cells. You find the biggest chunk of tumor that you can, you measure the biggest diameter of that, and that's what goes into the book. And by consensus, that's the way it is, but it also has, has led to uh, a, a good deal of lack of precision because there has not been a, a better way to measure that. The next observation is that there's no minimum tumor volume which will tell you that you're not really at risk. In breast cancer, if you have microscopic tumor only in a lymph node, then that risk is not that much different than a patient with negative nodes. However, in melanoma, they have not been able to show that that's the case. So anytime you find any tumor, it's supposed to mean something. Now that gets very 
uh, gets to be an interesting conversation when the pathologist tells you there's one immunohistochemistry chemistry positive node that they found in the multiple sections that they've, sorry, one cell that they've identified in a whole number of sections they've done through this lymph node. And it literally comes down to one cell sometimes, and I'm skeptical about that. Anyway, you can also understand, we also understand that in patients who have additional lymph nodes positive beside the sentinel node, not a radioactive node, not a blue node, but other nodes, those patients have a very poor outcome. And so understanding that that is present it, uh, can be an important thing. And that risk is, is uh, estimated by the number of uh, positive nodes, tumor thickness, ulceration. All these things work together. We know from all these studies, and again, there's hundreds of them, that sentinel lymph node biopsy is the most accurate way to diagnose a patient who is at significant risk uh, of, of harboring a metastasis. And the final is that the morbidity that we see with complete regional lymph node dissection is much reduced by taking out just the sentinel node or node. So all those things are clear. Now, fortunately, the people um, who, the center that developed this, Dr. Morton and his colleagues in Los Angeles, organized a trial very soon after the sentinel lymph node uh, technique was first published. So from 1994 to 2002, there's the international um, multi-institutional selective lymphadenectomy trial one, which randomized patients to wide local excision alone or, sentinel, or wide local excision with sentinel lymph node biopsy. If you had a positive node, you underwent completion lymph node dissection by definition in this trial. Um, uh, extremely important uh, trial to understand the meaning of a sentinel lymph node. Um, two years ago, the 10-year outcome of this trial was published, and it shows some very interesting things. The first you see on the left is the incidence of positive nodes as time progresses. So the red line, the higher line that you see there, are patients who underwent sentinel lymph node biopsy, and about 15% of them had a positive sentinel lymph node. They underwent a completion lymph node dissection, and then over the next 10 years, another 5 7% or so of them developed another lymph node in that node-bearing area that had been, quote, completely excised. If you had wide local excision alone, then the blue line that you see there, those are the number of patients who develop a positive node in that uh, regional node-bearing area. The graph on your right shows the overall survival for the population. No difference whatsoever. So the skeptics all said, wonderful, this is exactly what we anticipated. And the uh, optimists, the ones who were in favor of this, said, wait, 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 hold on a second. If you compare the outcome of patients who had a positive sentinel lymph node and had the lymph nodes removed and compare them to those on the blue line, the ones who eventually had a positive, had a node arise in the area, those people who had delayed node dissections had a poor survival. So we should do it for that reason alone. Well, that's not a randomized, that, that's a second analysis in the, in the system, so patients are not necessarily balanced for prognostic factors in the two populations. And so um, that's an interesting observation, but no difference in overall survival. So again, this is a group of patients who represent only 15% of the original, uh, of the total population uh, that is there. So it's hard to show that there's going to be a difference, but there was absolutely none in that trial. So as a result of that, the NCCN guideline shows you that if patients have a tumor less than uh, 0.75 millimeters in thickness, and now that's going to be 0.8 because there's a new staging system which divides patients at 0.8 instead of 0.75. We don't have time to go over why that's the case. If that's the situation, no sentinel lymph node biopsy. But if it's between 0.75 and 1, they recommend that you consider, quote, discuss and consider sentinel lymph node biopsy to explain to the patient that there's a risk, but it's a relatively low risk, because if we look at the uh, combined results of published trials for patients who have thin melanomas like this, less than one millimeter in thickness, about one in 20 will have a positive sentinel lymph node. And um, if you have it uh, less than 0.75, it's only going to be about 3%. Um, 
and then if you have that in that interval 0.75 to 1, it's about 7% or so. So again, it's a, it's a very low rate, and the people question about whether or not uh, that is worthwhile. There is a false negative rate to this technique. Don't uh, put that in a separate slide, but it's around 5% of people who have a negative sentinel lymph node will eventually uh, develop a palpable node in the, in the area. So it's not a, a perfect test. Um, if the tumor is um, uh, greater than a millimeter in thickness, however, uh, there is good consensus that one uh, should, as you see in the cent central uh, part of the NCCN guidelines here the, of the algorithm, that you should discuss and offer. I don't like that word offer very much. I'd prefer it said recommend, but uh, it is recommended for patients who have a, a tumor uh, uh, thickness in that area. So it's become standard treatment and is certainly considered <clears throat> standard therapy as far as being a diagnostic technique. Now, um, for patients who have tumors that are, uh, that have a uh, wide local incision, central lymph node biopsy and a positive node, the standard recommendation is that they undergo completion lymph node dissection because that's the treatment in the randomized trial and there isn't any good data, till very recently, about what you should do with those patients because, again, only about 15% of them will have an additional positive node, so 85% or so are being operated on unnecessarily um, without a change in, in uh, long-term outcome. So there are two randomized trials, one of which came out very recently, just this past June. This is a German um, uh, cooperative group, and uh, it randomized uh, uh, 233 patients in one uh, group at wide local excision alone and, um, sorry, wide local excision central lymph node biopsy, one with observation, one with completion uh, lymph node dissection. So uh, this trial, as you can see in the overall survival, shows no difference after three years of uh, median follow-up, uh, no difference in overall uh, uh, outcome. However, this trial is underpowered to, try to, to uh, recognize a difference of uh, 5 to 10 percent or so. They closed the trial early because of the uh, low accession rate. It is not an easy trial to do to talk to a patient and say, I'm going to uh, randomize you. I don't know the answer to this question. You know, I'm the expert, but I don't know the answer to this question. So in the United States, or sorry, in the rest of the world, uh, there is MSLT2 trial, which is wide local excision plus uh, uh, observation, uh, wide local excision central lymph node biopsy, node positive, then it's observation or completion lymph node dissection. This trial completed accession in 2014, so there are uh, almost 2,000 patients in the trial. It is powered to pick up a, a difference of that uh, magnitude. The follow-up now is, at, is over three years, so we expect that there's gonna be a publication uh, for this trial uh, within the next six months or so uh, that will give us the answer uh, to date about it. The advantage of the trial, of course, if it's, if it's positive, it's going to show you hopefully who's going to need to have completion node dissection, but if it's negative, it's going to save a lot of people a regional node dissection which has a lot of morbidity to it. And um, the, the, the available evidence will say that it's, it's probably not going to show that, but we don't know the answer to that yet. So we can make some conclusions about sentinel lymph node biopsy. One is that it's a multidisciplinary uh, procedure that has a high rate of success and a low morbidity to it. It's primarily a diagnostic procedure, which is critical in defining prognosis and guiding treatment. There are, we don't go, have time to go over that today, but there are a number of emerging trials of adjuvant therapy with the increased availability of um, of uh, effective uh, uh, chemotherapeutic agents that uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy positive patients uh, may undergo completion lymph node dissection if they, um, if they uh, have indicators that say that there's a high chance that there are additional positive nodes there, and that may qualify them for some of these trials. But that in reported and ongoing uh, randomized trials, there's no survival advantage to date for completion lymph node dissection. And of course, when it comes down to the bottom line, the decision about this uh, kind of an operation should be uh, between the physician and the patient to discuss all these risks and benefits.
Thank you very much.